Hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And today we're going to talk about a topic that has been well making the rounds in on the internet. And not only about Harry's diagnosis uh, by Dr. Gabor Mate, and it is not that diagnosis that we're going to talk about, but both the Harkles diagnosis Harry and Meghan. Although uh, my attorney has told me that I better not say that this is a formal diagnosis, but I'm just going to make uh, some kind of uh, conversation about one topic that was brought to my attention on my Twitter account, which was regarding Joe Navarro's excellent book uh, called Dangerous Personalities. I have uh, no stake in his company or his book, I just recommend his books because they are amazing. There is this um, uh, What Everybody Is Saying, which is a great battle language book. But this Dangerous Personalities, I'm going to include the link in the description because we are going to talk about this topic, the wound collector. And why this uh, wound collector topic is important. He has made uh, posts and blog posts on Psychology Today. And he included this definition on his book. And might be, it might be uh, useful to define what are the articles about. Well, here it is. Wound collectors are individuals who go out of their way to collect social slights, historical grievances, injustices, unfair or disparate treatment, or wrongs whether real or imagined, and who feel perennially aggrieved. Don't tell me it doesn't sound like our Montecito morons, especially the perennially aggrieved. That is something that is happening all the time, over and over again. Collect social slights, racism, anyone, injustices. Well, every injustice is known to mind that they are trying to work through their archwell, um, I don't know, company or whatever, or foundation or whatever it is. They tend to um, work through these uh, goals for humanity when there has been so much attention on them as people. Because, well, it's in the, a personal way that they have garnered that attention and not channeling that attention to, well, the initiatives. Well, the attention that Harry has been gained lately is not faring well for better up, in my opinion. And sooner or later, the people that better up, you're going to find out, well, the, 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 worst, the worst way, that they're going to be spared. And I will prefer to be spared from all this. Uh, this is the concept continued. They wallow in perceived transgressions. Perceived transgressions. Perceived is the most important word here. And nourish these grievances by insisting on the ill intent of the part of others and by not forgetting nor forgiving. This is interesting because it's this feud that comes over and over again, this bitterness. And that's why I highlighted that headline. Prince Harry talks about his physical altercation with Prince William. And there was an artist I didn't know about um, this, uh, Alison Jackson. How come I did not see this? Uh, this is a photographer uh, uh, that enacts this, uh, this, this kind of, <laughs> I don't know, setups with perfect doubles of the, well, the, 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 the protagonists that we are talking about and made this set up that it's, it's rather graphic. I encourage you to, to check out her art on Instagram. But the problem is that, the problem is that thus continued, they guarantee the wounds remain fresh, festering, and irrationally handy. Tell me what could be more handy than a book, than a paperback. That's where you have the complete summary of your grievances, of your fears, of your struggles. But in this case, we don't have a, yeah, a catharsis. Uh, what is, what was the change? What is the way that you started and you changed to be like this right now. Okay, you say that you began as a prince and you became a man, but 
The man that we saw on that Gabor Mate interview is still a train wreck, so nothing has changed. In fact, you look even worse, and that, that is something that I have to mention too. Continued by teasing these psychological wounds, which according to them, no one else has ever endured or suffered as they have. <laughs> Sounds familiar, Megan. Acrimonious sentiments seep out in the form of complaints or constant carping. Yet nobody has been through what they have been through. Nobody has asked if Megan is okay. Nobody has to had to deal with the British media paparazzis like Megan did. And we see the comparisons between her photographs and Catherine's photographs back then. And there's no contest. And this is even funnier when we see this kind of headlines. Why Meghan Markle and Prince Harry must face a public that dislikes them. My question is, why do they have to face the public? And by the way, this is Jack Royston for Newsweek. You know that he is pro Meghan and Harry. Why do you have to face the public? Yeah, it's important to bring awareness to your initiatives, to the charities, to everything that you want to, uh, I don't know, heal in the world. But you're bringing attention to yourself as a person, to your own struggles. That is that is okay if it's a 1% or 2% of the image that you bring to the world. Because, but if it's 90%, or 95% of what you bring to the world, then you are just uh, uh, an attention uh, 304. Attention that ultimately is going to transform into satire, like the Babylon Bee satire parody. Meghan Markle inspires millions of young girls with a message that no matter how famous, rich, and powerful they are, they will always be oppressed. Uh, by the way, I'm going to tell you, this headline, with everything that is happening in the world, with so many stupid and wacky and woke things that is, are happening in the world, with so many uh, strange headlines, I, I found out so many people that don't know what the Babylon Bee is and thought this headline was real. I, I can tell you, I, I feel your pain. I understand that if you... Look at this. You read this without the Babylon Bee. If you don't know what the Babylon Bee is, then pretty much with everything that is going on with this insane world we are living in, yeah, but yeah, they will always be oppressed. Could be a viable headline. But, and this is the danger of uh, these uh, wound collectors. Eventually, if unchecked, the toxic nature of wound collecting explodes to the surface, metastasized like a volcanic toxic brew, the seething magma of psychological pus manifesting as anger, lashing out, animosity, or even vengeance. This is a problem and this is no joke. This is something that begins a, a cycle, as I mentioned in yesterday's video. And... This is vicious cycle begins mounting and you try to express that in such a way that is not to, uh, to, to try to give an example. Like, you can overcome this kind of things. No, you're trying to inspire pity in people. And when that doesn't work, you inspire even more pity writing a book and you inspire even more pity giving interviews and you inspire even more pity with an interview with a doctor who has experience with substances and you love substances. Well, that is uh, uh, made in heaven, as uh, some would say. By the way, you know that so much is said about Harry being the happiest, is genuinely happy right now. And he says that himself with his own words. But we cannot help but notice that his body language has changed over the years. And of course, if you look at photos of Harry in 2015 and you look at photos of Harry in 2022, for example, you are going to find smiles, you're going to find laughs, you're going to find um, that he's serious at times. 
But you cannot help but notice that in that general sense of body language, in that general sense of behavior, something has been changing. Like the man is not all right. And as a man, I understand the issues. I understand the problems. I understand the hurdles, the uh no matter how privileged is Harry, I can understand that he can have issues to overcome. The problem is that he shows no actual intention. And in this illustration of this concept of one collectors, Harry fits perfectly to a T. And, well, Megan does too. That's, that's why I think they, they just match perfectly to each other. The problem is that that is never, that, that is a, a, no role model for anybody. I think nobody or most people are not paying attention to them, but I might be wrong. I might be biased in that regard. Uh, it, 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 in fact, it's so many times these kind of headlines end up being the real deal, like being reality. So many times, both in The Simpsons, The Babylon Bee, American Family, all, all this satire uh, shows and media, and South Park too, end up saying things, and end up make, making jokes that become reality. And that's what I would not like to do. This is not the way that we should act. And this kind of insights, I'm going to repeat uh, Joe's book, Dangerous Personalities, are needed to establish like a baseline of how a toxic personality behaves. Again, this is not an actual diagnosis of Harry and Meghan, but it's more like an insight that their behavior has attracted so much bad juju that, well, one can jump to the conclusions that they are in some very bad juju all the time, and they are not interested in getting out that victimhood narrative, especially Harry, that we see his battle language decaying by the minute. I will love to know what you think about this in the comments. My Royal Rogue is, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, I'm the Royal Rogue, and until we meet in another video or another live, remember the two most important words, much love and bliss.